Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Brandon, and we're from Fat Gaming. We're also Ubisoft star players and community reporters for this year's E3. We're here to show you guys a little bit of gameplay from their new game, For, for Honor. Honor. For Honor. It's going to be so good. But anyways, the story will cover all three factions as they fight against themselves and the mysterious villain, Apollyon. The mission we're going to walk you through right now takes place about midway through the game. It's actually going to be showing you some of the Viking gameplay as they go ahead and raid one of the samurai villages. So let's go ahead and get this started, guys. Play that reel. Boom. Mm. So this one's called Up at the Beach. It's about halfway through the campaign, like he was saying, um, and you do play as Vikings, uh, which was really exciting since they finally got revealed at this year's E3. Apollyon's so it starts off um, right where the teaser to took the place. So you're going to see a lot of the boat starting out the very front of it with but the eyes on fire, radio. which really captures Remind the just ferocity that these Vikings are going to have. Then we finally are. actually got to see the Vikings, which was huge. I know we at the raid. conference, you and I, Kind of lost it here. Yeah, we uh, absolutely kind of lost. Well, I lost my not inappropriate yet. word at this point. Um, so it was really good. Couldn't not wait. Uh, the game looks beautiful. Um, everything you're saying is, seeing is actually in-game, which is cool. There's no cutaways or snippets for cinematics. So that's really nice. And this is actually like pre-game footage. So although this was all playable, the game is still not out for a few months. Actually, gosh, it's almost half a year still for this game to come out. So they still have tons of time to go back through and make it prettier, Freeze! make sure everything runs really smooth. But honestly, getting our hands on it, the game the game ran fantastic. Absolutely yeah, perfect. Yeah, really smooth, no hiccups, no weird things happening. Even in the uh, sections we got to play through, they were all really cleaned up and fine. So it was amazing. And this isn't not just going to be just a trailer breakdown, you guys. This is actually a mission that you play. So it's going to be tons of fun. You see lots of kind of factions going back and forth. You see a lot of the Vikings, but you also get to see a lot of the really cool uh, samurai stuff. So they've got lots of these arrows and stuff. Nothing that you're going to use in game, or at least that, that we've seen. I haven't seen any arrows yet. I haven't yet. seen any arrows either or anything hinted at that. So that'll be kind of cool if it is. Or if not, I mean, I'm still good with all the close quarter stuff. This is really cool. Uh, Vikings finally gets on the bay. You play as one of the characters. There's a multitude of uh, different characters you get to play as in each faction. This one's determined as the uh, raider, as what they kept classing him as. Um, so he's the big uh, giant guy that gets to go in there with a single-sided axe. Uh, they've also told us you can kind of change equipment. Uh, we've seen everything from like a sword and shield, long swords that some of the knights use, and then, you know, like katanas and stuff like that. The samurai will be swinging around at us here. But Brandon, tell me a little bit about that. So that's uh, this raider's his kind of signature move here. Each character has one where you can do a guard break and you can follow it up with one of their signature moves. His is obviously where you pick that character up and charge. You can use it in multitudes of ways. The way I use it most, at least in this first part, is like you see right there, where I kind of get out of a corner. I had a lot of guys behind me. They were starting to kind of pin me down. So it was great to kind of pick him up, run out of there. Well, you know, they quickly came behind me again. But you can use that very versatilely. You'll see later in the gameplay, too, that there's uh, more creative ways to use it, too, than just pick him up and run. Even right there, too, is like Dan, uh, not blah, 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 but Brandon's character is doing, if you notice that little uh, brief of smoke as he moves aside, you can, like, sidestep really quick. Um, you don't always have to keep sidestepping in motion. You can actually quick dash and get around moves and then line yourself up for another attack. Because the art of battle, which is this system that they're using, is really good. Super easy to pick up. It's going to be really hard to master. As you can see, it's that shield, that crest that like shows up on your back. If you notice, it's showing the direction of where you'll be attacking. And then the other opposing enemies have the same thing. If you line up with them, it's a successful block. If you don't line up and they're hitting you, it might cross over and actually hit you. Or you might be able to follow up with like a parry or something like that, which is really cool. But the art of battle, man. It, it blows me away because so it's, it's something completely new that we've never really seen in a game. It keeps the game really fast paced where it almost feels like that quick action, that really fast combat that you'd see in like a hack and slash, but it also gives you a much more tactical uh, style of fighting that no game has really ever given you, at least not a sword fighting game like yeah. this has ever experienced before. And I don't know if you saw that too really quick before he stepped away from that wall. When he swung the ax, he didn't even connect with the character. He actually connected on the wall, so you've gotta be really cognizant of like where you're standing, your positioning's at. Otherwise, you are gonna hit like the surrounding area. You gotta pick the best places to have have the battle in you have you have to know essentially your own fighting style before just wandering in here otherwise you could really mess up and open yourself for an attack even further than that the game doesn't just completely walk you through where yeah it does show you kind of where your next objective is as you can see when that uh, mission started i took off to the left where i was fighting a lot of enemies and they just kept rolling out we found out that that was an infinite spawn place and uh then our people that were telling us what to do in the headphones were like you should probably go this way because uh, you're gonna be here a while if that's the case 
So luckily, you know, it does kind of, but it doesn't just tell you. There is a nice narrative which kind of talks you through, but nothing, nothing that like forces you, that rips you out of the game, that feels like at no point is it ever not a choice that you made to get to where you need to go. Yeah. And uh, here's one of the other nifty parts too throughout the whole thing. So like obviously you have like, your um, hack and slash, your your dealing damage to the enemy, and kind of taking down the minions one by one. But you have other segments like this too, where like you're using a grappling hook to get up the wall. It gives you the feel of being in the battle. You're not just mindlessly going through and whacking down hordes of enemies. There are siege opportunities, I guess you could call them like this. You're on a rope, you're avoiding the rocks and the stuff and debris they're throwing from the castle wall, and then you're still a Viking powering through it all, and then just trying to get up this wall, which is amazing. Yeah, I hope to see this. I'm sure that we'll see this uh, with every different character that we play. Oh, you just took an arrow to the knee. Yeah, I, ouch. That hurts. Yes, it does. But, no, it really gives you a feel. Even going up this, like, the controller just felt right. Him moving, you kind of swung out of the way when you needed to. And this is actually one of my favorite scenes from the whole trailer. Axes him in the face. One That's warrior so good. made it to the top. The narration behind this is absolutely phenomenal. It to me felt like reading a book where you're kind of you're you're reading this story, you're kind of being driven along, but this is almost like when I read a book how I envision what's happening. So for them to take this character and, you know, put him in my hands and make it very comfortable and easy to pick up was great. Additionally, you were talking earlier about, you know, being able to pick your own weapons. The characters are much more customizable than that. So you actually get to choose what your character looks like, his uh, his weapon that he's holding, all the gear and stuff. So when we played this, there was a few different customizable classes that we had. But when the game comes out, it's going to be fully customizable. Customizable. You're gonna have full control, so your character's not gonna look like everybody else's. You're gonna have a lot of fun building him. I know I'm probably gonna spend uh, way too long on that. Probably. It's almost like when you get an RPG and you spend hours on end trying to make your own character. I'm assuming that's how I'll be every time I get new stuff, because everybody's here for stuff, like Jason Vanderberg said in our interview, which is really good. Um, but yeah, and this character too, right? This other samurai guy, he was a very different archetype than what we're used to seeing. Uh, most of the samurais that we've been hacking down at this point have been uh, very. Uh, small in frame. This one was really butchy, and in my gameplay, this is actually Brandon's gameplay right now, um, but like he could break through guards with that club. He had no issue getting past my Vikings guard, which was huge. Um, so that just brings another thing to the palette as well. Guard breaks on top of swinging and everything else. It's crazy. It's, it's good stuff. It's nice to see that too, because that doesn't just mean like if you want to play the heavy hitter, you always have to play a Viking. You can play that heavy hitter, and you can go be a knight. You can go be a samurai. You just got to find the right class. You got to find the right combination that works for you, and you're gonna be able to pick up whatever class is your favorite, and you know have some fun with them. There we go. Yes. Spike kill. Um, so like he kind of shows, there are certain parts of the environment where you can use it to your advantage to kind of thin out enemies that are kind of being annoying. So he threw somebody into the spike wall from a guard break, they're dead. There's no recovering or having them get back up to power through. I know he didn't do it either, but you can actually throw people off the ledges here and they will fall right back down and die. There's no recovery from most of this stuff. So this is just showing the depth that this game has. You know, a lot of people when they first see this, they want to call it a hack and slash and it makes sense. It's got that quick, fast paced action, but there's so much more that this game offers. We're still trying to uh, figure out the exact genre that is, because to me, it feels like a completely new genre. It's definitely a fighting game. You Maybe Battler, maybe- I love this part. Warzone game, I don't know. So good. Because if you're in front of a Switch and you're a Viking, why use the Switch when you can just break it? Let your entire army in and the make sure that they can't reclose that gate. That no, they're not. And uh, that's really cool. It shows like the main guys about the top of the wall. Yeah, so you'll uh, we'll see him later on during this gameplay because that's he does not just show up. And here's another one of the different samurais. This guy is really quick um, using just a katana, but like if you notice, he'll kind of fake you out. He'll one-handed swing stuff and kind of throw his other arm another way. So on top of trying to read their figure and what they're doing, you have to really pay attention, like we were saying, the art of battle, wherever their cursor is, to successfully mount up for a defense or get the initial attack and keep carrying on through a combo. This right here, what I'm grabbing, you've probably that seen me grab a, a few of them throughout the game. Um, but that was actually a power up. So if you look down in the, the bottom pillar left, of light, yeah, if you look down in the bottom left corner, currently I have on the left hand side is going to be a second wind, which is basically going to give me some additional health in the game. And then on the right side, it's going to be one of my Viking special abilities. So you'll see me use that here in just a little bit as well. But those essentially are consumable. So like they'll be placed throughout the map um, as we've determined in the campaign that kind of like help you get that extra edge. 
Um, I don't know if they're going to be as uh, everywhere like we were playing in the demo that we got to play through, but it's definitely cool to see that there is some unique things you can pick up that help you get the upper hand in some of this stuff. And using them, you need to be very careful because obviously, as you execution. were saying, oh God, every execution in this is so brutal. He gets really the knights, good. the vikings, the samurais, whichever ones, they're just, their kills are so over the top. Yeah. And how you start off executions is, so obviously you, you beat your enemy to a pulp, um, but the last hit, if you get a heavy swing on him, the heavy attack, um, you can actually go out, that's so cool, you can actually go out and do an execution. Uh, from what we saw, it was set up on square or triangle, um, and they're just brutal, depending on what weapon and what you're fighting, and it's, it's just so cool. You can definitely just send them to pieces. I believe one of the night ones, you actually like put your sword through his stomach, rip your sword out through the top of his head, and then chop his head off, in case, you know, splitting him down the middle wasn't enough. There's uh, also one we saw where, like, somebody would uh, come down on the collarbone and then flip his sword around and then hit him with the hilt. That was disgusting. It was perfect. We Everything this game needs. So what you we saw there, actually, you act if you did, if you noticed, I actually hit my, my teammate in this one. So although this is a storyline, you can see some of my other teammates kind of running around helping me out. There is friendly fire that is going to be in the storyline as well as multiplayer. Yeah. The damage is nerfed a little bit, so don't worry if you hit your bud, you're not going to do full damage. But if you don't want to stay too close to them, if you're playing a class maybe like these raiders who have a very wide swing, you need to be really strategic and make sure you kind of move to an area that's appropriate for the attack. Yeah, because they were already saying too, like uh, like Warker kind of hitting on it already. It's really a good spot to pick um, you know where you're staging somebody and get them to the appropriate area for you to commence in that kind of a battle because like he's showing here he's hitting the sidewalls he's doing wide swing on his own friends uh, the friendly fire is dialed down in the campaign they told us already but yeah in PvP that could be like a huge snake turnover and somebody can just send you to, to, to the afterlife at that point or the gates of Valhalla at this point that's right you definitely do want to pick up all of those little health as you saw there I went ahead and snagged it did not use it right away because I'm still at about 50% health it's really important to use those at the right time to make sure that you don't you know waste any of them this is going to be the boss fight here this is one which is probably one of the coolest things we saw in the campaign was like actual boss fights yes so this guy's uh dialed up he's going to have a lot more health he can actually hit you pretty hard too and punish you severely if you leave yourself open the other people, they kind of take pot shots at you, kind of dwindle you down in groups, but this guy's all out one-on-one, -on -one, and this is uh, Saburo. I also uh, like this, cool. too, because they're going to add a new element. So we've seen almost a full mission here, and you're going to see a new element here that you haven't seen throughout the rest of the mission that just wasn't there. It's uh, something called the revenge mode. As soon as it's activated, it's going to actually increase your health, your speed, your stamina, your attack damage, pretty much everything. So it's really important when you do get into these boss fights to use that revenge mode very carefully. And the revenge, it's that bar that's filling up right next to the consumables there. Every time he's getting hit, or even when he does a successful block, it's going up. And uh, it definitely makes a, uh, a different situation for you to be in once you actually have it activated. And I think Saburo can do it too, if I'm not mistaken. He can. I believe actually right when I activate my first one, you'll see him activate his as well. It's not even their final form, guys. That's right. It's not even their final form. As you can see, my attacks are doing much more, and he, and just, he just activated did his and broke your guard and sent you on your butt. Yes, so this character here is actually really good. You need to learn and kind of read each character once you get into a fight with them. There is a guard break versus most of the smaller enemies. The guard break is really good. You can knock their weapon up, hit them with a light attack, back them up, jump away if you want. He is actually a little bit quicker. He's well more trained. So when you go to do the guard break for him, he actually steps forward at you and then breaks your break. So it kind of sets you back as well. So, oh, he... I thought he was about to do it right there. No. But no. There we go. Yep. So you got to be really careful. You're not just going to be able to approach every enemy the same. Even every samurai, you're going to have to fight differently. If you're a Viking, depending on which weapon they have, even just the skill level of somebody, if somebody's really good at blocking, they might not be as good as attacking. So that way you're going to have to let them attack, block them, then go in. If somebody's really good at attacking, you're going to have to be more patient. And I don't know if you can see in this battle too, but there's a lot of uh, trade of blows back and forth. Even if you are in the right stance, the opposing thing, like they're both holding up, right? If Saburo goes to attack and Brandon initiated the same attack, literally whichever one is first to connect is going to do it. This game does not default you to a safe haven of automatically guarding if you've already initiated an attack. So that's why we're saying it's going to be very difficult to master because you might want to blame the game for this kind of stuff happening to you. But honestly, it's of your own accord. If you start an attack, your guy's going to follow through with that heavy weight. And if this, the other person gets a hit on you first, you're going to have to take a beating for it. It's just that simple. Yeah, so this is going to 
be kind of where this uh, this match kind of starts to wrap up here. As you see, I was actually able to get through this with one of my second wins left, which was important because when I was first running through it, I was pretty sure I was going to use all of them. But I made sure to be patient and calm. This game, you place, it's going to play different than anything you've ever gotten your hands on before. Yep. So I definitely recommend going to that check it out, you guys. The alpha is going to be up soon, so make sure you go and sign up for the alpha. It will be nice. We'll actually put a link uh, for the alpha right over here, wherever we end actually it. end up on screen, either spot. Um, but if you guys done. like this video and want to see more stuff for Honor, like we said, uh, we did win the uh, Community Reporter Contest. So we're probably bringing you more stuff in the future. Uh, game is set for what release date, Brandon? That's going to be February 14th. And for any of you who don't know the calendar very well, that is going to be Valentine's Day. Because this game is all about the love. We are talking on the same couch co-op, which a lot of people aren't doing these days. So that's going to be a lot of fun. The couch co-op is going to be for the single player mission. You can play two people. You can play online split screen. You can play multiplayer with your friends. The online is up to four players, so you and three buds can get down, start a little squad, challenge us, because we're building a team. It's going to be fierce. And I'm going to put my axe so far into your face, you're going to cry. I also am really excited it. to hear what everyone's excited for, which of the three factions, the Vikings, the Knights, or the Samurai. Let us know, you guys. Tweet it at us. Let Ubisoft know what you're excited for. Because we are excited and we can't wait to make more videos for you. So please like, subscribe, comment down below, find us all over the place. We've been tweeting a bunch lately, and we'll check you guys out then. Have a good one, guys. Later.